Yep, there it is. 2009 and up Infinity FX. In today's video, on the onset, it's going to look like one of those videos that answers a question that no one asked because we'll be talking about a key fob and we'll be talking about how to access your vehicle, how to get in. We'll talk about this simple three button key fob and how it does so much for your vehicle. But I hope that during the course of the video, you'll get to see features that you never really knew you had. And two, I'll be solving a problem that maybe you didn't really know you had. So this key fob. Let's first start with the simplest one, the one that we hope we never have to use very often or at all. The red part right here, which is worn, this is the the panic button. So hold down. And it was just flashing the irregular low beams. So you stop that by unlocking it. And you can also do that with the with the key blade inside here. As long as you stop it, as long as the car senses that you've unlocked it, it's all good. So let's do this. Lock button. Honks, flashes the hazards. Unlock, flashes the hazards, and it's quiet. You can actually change that mode so that it's a little more discreet, a little more quiet in case you live in a place with many people and you don't want to piss people off. And what you do is supposed to hold your lock and unlock button together. Let's try that. Three times. Well, I guess I hit it twice. But three times. It flashes the hazard lights three times and that indicates a change. So that when you lock it, it flashes the hazards twice and it's a game over. And when you unlock it, nothing happens. So I like the other mode because I parked pretty far from the house. So let's change that. Again, just hit both uh, lock and unlock. And I'm just making the best. That's why I'm using my thumb. Otherwise, I would use both hands and hold them at the same time. <laughs> I guess I hit it twice. But yeah, that changes the mode. And then unlock. There you go. So done deal. And at this point, uh, people who've owned Nissans or Infinities for a while, this might not really seem like such a new thing to you guys because Nissan has been doing this since about 97 at least. But one key fob trick is that if you hold your unlock button for more than one and a half seconds, maybe it was three, can't remember, you can actually change the setting. Your windows go down. And you'd think, uh, you know, conversely, that if you held your lock button, your windows would go up. No, not in Nissan's. So in this case, what you need to do is come up. If you wanted to roll them remote, well, without starting your car, what you do is come here and this is your key fob. Turn it around. On the back side, you've got this catch over here. And that releases your blade. So the way they've designed is that if you wanted your windows to roll up without starting your car, come here and do it like you're locking and locking is counterclockwise or anti-clockwise depending on what part of the world you're in so just do this and hold i usually wait to hear all four of them go because they don't go up at the same speed and you as you'd imagine going down same thing just um clockwise unlocks and just hold down And that's pretty much it, really. I guess I'm gonna roll the windows back up because it looks a little overcast today. Okay, perfect. So everything is locked and we're gonna do it again. Lock. Okay, game over. Then that does it for the windows, really, and the, the cool features. Now we're talking about useful stuff. Um, to unlock your vehicle, I've already shown that your key fob does it, right? You can unlock, you can lock, right? You also have, this is an intelligent key, so as long as you're close enough, when you hit this button here, one beep unlocks, two beeps locks. It's weird, it is backward, isn't it? And this is like one of the most important things I usually talk about when buying a new vehicle. Test the key, make sure that the blade that they give you with your key fob actually works and unlocks your doors. So what you do here, let's try it. 
unlock. Yep, sure works. And then lock. Yes, it does work. And in this case, I want to show you that we've got a button on this side, the your prox button or your intelligent key mode, so to say. You have another one on this side, the passenger side. But with these vehicles, uh, all the vehicles, all the Nissans and Infinities usually came with a uh, with a lock cylinder on the passenger side, but not the 2009 plus effects apparently all right so let's get into the vehicle uh, I wanted to show you something right you can do it from this door you can do it from the other door is that when you hit the unlock button you have the actuator go off because there is a setting there I call it the selective lock selective unlock yeah it is called a selective lock selective unlock that you can change the settings such that when you unlock it, it unlocks everything. Generally, the lock always locks everything. So let's get into the vehicle. And this is what it's like. Hit your start button. And setting. Okay. You'll notice right now that one of them is grayed out. That's the one I need. <laughs> so move it to the second position. Make sure my radio is off. Settings are off. This comfort and convenience, did you realize that just came up? Yeah, that's the one I need. So comfort and convenience. Selective door and lock. I'm gonna pick OK. Alright. And what this setting does for you is that let's turn off the car. With a selective door and lock. Lock. And you could do it any way, really. When I do hit it once, it unlocks that door, but this one is not unlocked. Okay? There's a certain uh, time period, there's an allowance time, whereby if you unlock it, it, it locks, you know, it allows you to unlock the other doors. But then hit lock. So we've used the, uh, the button over there. Likewise, we'll use the key fob. One, two. Now you hear all the actuators going off. Okay, done and tested. And obviously, why not test it the other way? The old school way. I think like my 97 Maxima. This is how you had to do it. Just unlock it twice. You couldn't really change the mode. Not any way that I knew. So listen to the actuators. That's how you unlock all of them. And then as I said, right, we so right now I had to hit it twice to unlock everything, but the lock always locks everything all at the same time. So that's here, the, there you go. Everything is locked. But again, for the sake of convenience, I usually prefer that the, my setting is, let's go to it. I prefer that the selective door unlock is off. So turn that off. And then turn it off like that that way when I go and unlock a door everybody can get in you know and things like that if you have passengers so that everybody can get in if you have passengers you can access your trunk and things like that and talking of which now that we're here most vehicles most conventional vehicles have some sort of a trunk button right around here trunk and gas right this one here has nothing not even a lever down here and it's it's pretty interesting as I said because when you look at this key fob it only has you know the lock and lock and panic but my other Nissans and Infinities this one is a Murano remote start lock and lock uh, lift gate and then panic and then even the Infinity M lock and lock trunk and the trunk it says hold over there looks like it's got a picture of a trunk and then panic so there are ways to do it definitely uh, but it's just that this one is done a little differently it's not being done over here and one of the well we'll talk about that at the giveaway a little later that being said uh, there obviously is a way to get into the trunk into the trunk area and also to operate the gas door so I want to show you that unfortunately my neighbor is running their machine so can't really do it so okay let's do this lock and in this vehicle this is how we do the trunk the trunk button 
the lift gate, and I'll keep calling it trunk, please pardon me. I might even call it a tailgate, you know, just work with me. So there is a sp uh, specific trunk button right here. Just come to where the emblem is. And when you look up, I hope you can see it, right here there's a pad, all right? That is a trunk pad, so to say, and that's how you unlock the trunk. So this is what I want to show you. When, right now, when I do this, okay, you heard a sound and it opened up and we're in, right? Usually, whenever you open the trunk, it could jump up, but because my struts are dead, my shocks are dead and haven't had a chance to address them, my, my lift gate doesn't really jump up, but just know that whenever you touch that pad, it's supposed to open it, okay? So, that's how you open the the lift gate the tailgate lift gate lift gate is what it is am i man just call it a trunk and let's let's lock it okay trunk is pretty easy right your gas door right here as i said it happens to people that buy a vehicle and they can't fuel it because they don't really know how to do it this thing right here no special buttons switches and all that what you do is now listen to it when i unlock this door just listen to that a lot of things made noise, right? Right now it's in the everything open mode. The way to open your gas door is just push. That's it. Just push your fuel door. <laughs> That's how you uh, you access it. So your fuel door never, it just shuts. That's it. But it does have a lock as well. And the lock is this thing right here. And to show you, I'll, I was thinking about going there, but it, I wouldn't be able to do it. So just watch this. When I lock the vehicle, unlock the vehicle <laughs> so this plunger right here locks in here and it holds everything down otherwise if your vehicle's unlocked you should be able to get into your vehicle into your get access to your fuel filler neck right so that's that's it for the fuel door easy now i wanted as i said before i wanted to tie this into the whole aspect of of the selective door and lock thing and let's do this. Let's change it back to the mode that I don't like, which is selective. Second mode, setting. Okay. So right now, let's make the selective on and turn the system off. And again, remember what happens with selective is that I unlock the door well, that, that was a lock. I unlock, and only one unlocks, right? Okay, let's lock it. This is one of those times I should have changed mode to, like, the quiet one. <laughs> but okay, I, at, at least you can hear the honking, right? Okay, so what happens with this is that with the selective mode, as I said, there's inconvenience that if I come and unlock this door, my passengers can't get in, right? I have to hit it twice to do it, which is not a very big deal. That's fine. But then the catch is this. One, sometimes you're loading stuff in your in your trunk, right? So I come here and hit my button. You can hear the beep, which says that something has been opened up, but everybody else trying to get into the doors has not been able to do it, right? So that's one thing to just consider that it doesn't exactly <laughs> cover everybody else when you do it like that. And the trunk pad, well, we'll talk about the trunk pad. So just like every, every other system though, I believe you can do the selective unlock from here twice. Let's, let's hear this. So right now, test this. That's all locked, right? So lock it up. Cool. Let's hit this twice and see if anything changes. I'm hitting it three times nothing's happening right so that's that's a problem that's just something that one of those disadvantages of the selective unlock thing but then if you live in an area with a lot of carjackings mugging and things like that it does make sense that when you open a door you only want to open that one door maybe sometimes you do want to open all of them so that your passengers can get into safety whatever that's all semantics at this point so and maybe I've not talked about this but um 
that's how you get into the trunk. I've mentioned that in, in this vehicle, you don't have any specialized trunk uh, buttons and things like that. However, in 2012, they actually got trunk button, trunk and like trunk cancel, cancel switch, which the trunk button was like a, it powered the, the lift gate whereby you could come here, you had a motorized, you had motorized shocks and the shocks would open the hatch all the way. And then to close it, you could close it manually, but then you could also just push a button and then the, the lift gate would go down. In this one, it's not powered you have to do it manually. At least it gave you a catch, right? <laughs> However, it does still have a sort of cool feature and I'm trying to find a way to show it. It's got a cincher, right? It doesn't have a motorized pull down, but it's got a cincher. And the cincher is, it works this way. You place it down. You could slam your trunk if you wanted to, but whenever you place it down like this, it pulls it down that last few millimeters. Let's do this. I'm going to show you what the cincher looks like pull up and then right here just look inside so this is the striker that you're no this is a striker sorry and then it goes into your lock mechanism so what the cincher feature does which again Nissan and Infinity has always played funny with it what you do is that when the striker hits it just watch what happens did you see that motorized pull yeah that's what the cincher does so right now let's go ahead and open it Watch it jump. <laughs> okay, so that's that's basically how you operate your trunk. All right, that's the feature in it. And as I said, yes, thankfully there is a way to get in here. And in the other vehicles that have um, a trunk switch and a trunk switch over here, they usually have a trunk cancel switch inside the glove compartment, which is a switch over here just says switch cancel basically when you when you cancel the switch when you toggle it off your trunk remote functions do not work so you cannot open your trunk using your key fob and i think it also affects that one all right so that's pretty much it you've seen what happens with the uh probably need to go back inside you've seen what happens with the with the trunk feature but um and you've also seen how this works that is why i personally like the selective mode to be turned off so that i can fully access my vehicle I, I just like that convenience it works for me as i said i'm not making this video to tell you exactly what to do i'm making this video to give you all these tools to equip you with all these tools so that you can configure your vehicle to the best way that works for you or for you okay let's do this setting there's like there's bonuses there's always bonuses with me people who've watched my videos for a while know that so this one is going to go off. There's something else I want to show you. So you've seen that I could touch those pads and make everything work, right? Let's cancel that. Intelligent key lock and lock off. Okay, let's turn this off. When you turn that off, that feature right there, what you're doing is that you can still lock your vehicle, right? You heard that. But then this button right here, dead the button doesn't work right and it doesn't work on the other side either like that so that intelligent that prox key feature goes away whenever you turn that feature off and this was gonna surprise you watch this the trunk isn't working either do you notice that yeah I'll tell you why so right now, as I said, you can still get into your car. You can still get into your car by this, which unlocks all the doors, right? And you can get into the vehicle using your blade. This one right here. That's why I label these things. Clockwise unlocks. Okay, you heard all the unlock, right? So. Now watch what happens. After unlocking it, come here. And what do you know? This time it opens. <laughs> so 
the, and the, there's a reason why I'm talking about that, and it will make sense in a bit. Let's lock the vehicle. The reason I'm talking about that is that because this button that you see here, that button is just a trunk actuator button. It's not really... It unlocks the vehicle in a way, as you could see when I had the global, the selective unlock off. When I hit that button, it unlocks everything, and that's good. But when I had the selective unlock off, it could only unlock the trunk and nothing else, even if I hit it twice, three times, right? So the reason I'm saying this is that the trunk button is a sort of confusing feature. For people that don't like it, then they look at it and say, well, it unlocked the trunk. Why did it not do other things, right? Depends on the, which of those two settings you've toggled in there, okay? But as I wanted to say is that as long as you've unlocked your vehicle, your, your vehicle now gives the, the rest of the system uh, and as long as you've unlocked the door, the vehicle gives the rest of the car permission to unlock using buttons, right? Let's see if this this works, actually. It is going to work. So the reason I'm doing that is that I wanted to tell you that this right here is just a trunk opener switch. But the real trunk button, the intelligent key button, is this one right here. So it is pretty cool, but it's this one on the side is the one you need and I suppose if you're working at night You could feel there's a button here. I, I don't know if you can see that texture, but there's a little Dimple well, it's not a dimple. It's a it's a bump underneath here And it is right in line with this one here. So when you're working this is actually what your intelligent key switch is right now It's gonna be dead because as I said uh Oh I didn't shut the trunk properly, that's what happened. I think it, is it now shut? Yeah, no, I'm not sure. It's gonna trip. Okay, that's done. But I was just trying to show that right now it's dead and nothing's gonna happen. And when I pull it up, again, nothing happens. So, <laughs> that trunk button is an in, impre it's an interesting one and I want you to pay attention to it. Let's go back inside the vehicle. Oh, well that doesn't work. And change our setting once again. I'm not saying it's the last time, but it's among those last times, I guess. So intelligent key lock and unlock turn that back on right and turn it off okay and at this point lock okay and as I said this only works when it's close to the vehicle so right now nothing's gonna happen here nothing's gonna happen everything's locked okay however if I carry this with me, remember that I could un that I could unlock every door by just touching this pad right here, and this one opened everything, right? When people are behind here and they're thinking, well, how do I actually go ahead and shut? How do I lock everything without having to go to? The In case this is so much trouble for you to push, just hit this one, and that's it. That locks everything. And I like using this one because it's behind here, so I can usually, if I'm not sure what the other doors are doing, the, the gas door actuator, that plunger is so loud. So this is one way to get into your vehicle. Just hit, unlocks everything, everybody can get in, and then hit that. Locks. So this one right here works the same way as this one right here, and the one on the other side. So let's kick this thing up a notch right let's get in the vehicle we're gonna change the mode one more time for, for science setting let's take the selected door and lock thing off watch that okay but this time the intelligent lock thing is functioning right okay so, at this point, we're gonna lock. Everything works the way it's supposed to 
supposed to intelligent key to unlock just that door okay let's if you don't respond to it by the way it locks back up and let's see how that how long that takes might have been such a long time maybe 15 seconds maybe 30 i can't remember what this one was set to but just watch or listen Well, maybe not today. It's going to take quite a while. I'll find a different way to show the test, but this either locks or unlocks. I guess we're still within that time, so it, all it did was lock. Okay, so remember, that only unlocks one door, right? So, and we've done this before. We've shown that unlocking this one here only unlocks the trunk. And even if you hit it twice, three times, nothing's going to happen, right? That's the main trunk button, so to say. But remember, there's something else. This one here is just a lock. It doesn't open the trunk. So when I hit this once, it unlocks something. <laughs> Actually, I think that unlocks the gas, does it? No, it doesn't. It unlocks this one here. If you hit it again... There you go. It deals with every other one at this point. So that's what happened. Actually, the first push just <laughs> locked it and did whatever it done here. Okay? So let's do it this way. Let's actually lock so, with it, so that we start from a certain spot. Okay? Unlock. It just beeped. Nothing, un no actuator moved or anything. All it says is that something's open. Don't really know which one it is. All it says is that we've disarmed the vehicle and disarming the vehicle in this case might be just the fact that it's allowed the trunk to be opened but when you hit it a second time this time you actually hear actuators opening up so the selective unlock is a little interesting with regards to that one because what it does is that it opens everything the first touch is that it just disarms second touch unlocks things and how does that work check this let's do this I've already done the experiment where if you try to unlock with the with the let's put it like if you try to unlock the vehicle with the intelligent key system disabled from in there nothing would open up right so here check this unlock it just beeped nothing no actuators jumped and then put that away and when you come here again the key keys over there I can it's now made all the switches available so it's interesting I mean a lot of different configurations you can get into a lot of different buttons you can play with it's let's put this away see if anything changes because all I've done is disarmed the vehicle yeah, with the with the front doors you actually need to be there you need to unlock them properly so so get in here and i think we are getting to the end of the video i've done almost everything i wanted i think i've shown everything i thought i could show with any configuration and i've shown the tricks with the windows i've shown other things i i hope that this video is useful in one way or another even if you haven't learned anything that could get you out of a crisis yet as I said my main goal with these videos especially these detailed videos about simple things is that I would just like to give you options the purpose I'm not telling you to change anything you know people would ask why would you even want to change that there are people in different circumstances who feel like wow that is a feature that I want that is going to be good for me so I hope watching this video helps you and lets you know that you do have options and that hopefully something does work out for you okay so that's it that's it for now